You want to make a Minecraft server to play Minecraft 1.20.6 with your friends and in this video we're going to show you exactly how to do that going over every single step of making a Minecraft server for you and your friends. Now I do want to mention that this is just for your friends. It's not a 24 hour server. It's only up and running when your computer is up and running and actively running the server. You're also going to need a good computer because well it's pretty resource intensive to run a Minecraft server and you're going to need good internet because the internet that's being used is your own internet. Because it's your own internet as well, that means anyone who gets the IP address can figure out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates, including DDoS you, which basically means hit your internet offline, which is why it's so important that this server is for your friends, your family, people you would invite over to your house. But what if you don't want to have a server that's reliant on your own computer or have a server that's using your own internet connection? Maybe you want to make it public. Maybe you want to make it private, but you just want to make sure that it's secure. Well, that's where our company, Simple Game Hosting, comes in. Go to the first link in the description down below the breakdown.xyz slash simple to start your very own 24-hour DDoS protected Minecraft server in just a few minutes. There's no port forwarding or anything like that at Simple Game Hosting, and you can easily add mods, plugins, and mod packs to your server in just a few minutes. Plus, if you have any issues along the way, there's expert live chat support there to help you out. So, for example, if you add a mod and can't start the server, the support team there is there to help fix those issues and get your server online for you. On top of all that, it is your server, so you can customize it however you want. Anything you can do on a self-hosted server, you can do it at Simple Game Hosting. So go check out Simple Game Hosting at the first link in the description down below the breakdown .xyz slash sgh and start your Minecraft server the simple way. Nevertheless, what if you want to make a server for free without having to use Simple Game Hosting or any Minecraft server host on your own computer? Well, that's where this video comes in. Let's jump into it. First things first, you want to go here. It's the second link down below and it's going to take you to our in-depth text guide on making a Minecraft server. It's really, really good, really in-depth and great if you prefer text guides, but I'm guessing you don't because you're watching this video. So let's go ahead and and click on download here to go to where we can download the Minecraft server software. As you can see here, we have download Minecraft underscore server 1.20.6. That's what we want. So go ahead and click on the green download link here and the download will begin. You may need to keep or save this file depending on your browser. It's 100% safe to do that though. This is Minecraft.net, so Minecraft's official website. Once that's downloaded, we can go ahead and minimize our browser. And what we want to do is create a new folder on our desktop. So we're going to right click, create a new folder, and we can title this Minecraft 1.20.6 server because, well, that's what this is. It's a 1.20.6 Minecraft server. I'm now going to drag and drop that file we downloaded, that server file. It might not have .jar for you. It might just be called server into that folder on our desktop. Now what we want to do is open this folder up, and I would recommend going over to view here and making sure file name extensions is checked. That's why yours might not have .jar at the end. So if we click view and click file name extensions, it's now server jar and we can go ahead and double click on this now for me I know it's gonna generate these files and folders but for you it might not and that's because of Java. You need Java, specifically Java 21, in order to play and start and run a Minecraft server on your own computer. Now, we can check our Java version pretty easily by going to Apps and Features, and then in Apps and Features, you can search for Java. And if we do that, we can see we have Java Kit 21, so Java Development Kit 21. That means we have Java 21. That's why this worked for me. If yours is Java Development Kit 20, 19, 17, Java 8, whatever your yours is. If it's not 21, it won't work. And what you want to do is uninstall that. Then go to the description down below on this video and go to here. This is our in-depth guide on getting Java 21. Java 17 is still here as well. It'll soon go away because it's not needed for modern versions. But we're in that transition period where anything before 1.20.6 needs Java 17 and anything after it needs Java 21. So you'll come here, you'll click download Java 21, and then you will select Windows and then download the x64 installer. From there, it's just like installing any other program. Double click on it and install it just like any other program. We do have a guide on that. This guide for Java 17 will work as well for Java 21. The installation process is exactly the same. The only thing that's different is you're downloading Java 21 here, right, instead of Java 17. Nevertheless, you may also need to run the jar fix once you've got Java downloaded and installed. This is gonna take all the jar files on your computer and link them back to Java, making them work together. Basically, this will take an 
activate your server.jar to where when you double click on it, it will open with Java 21 generating these files and folders. Nevertheless, we can now go ahead and open up the eula.txt in Notepad. And if we agree to the Minecraft eula, which we do, we can change eula equals false here to eula equals true. T-R-U-E exactly like that. And then click File, Save. It will save the Minecraft eula.txt file. And now when we double click on the server.jar, our server is actually going to start. So it's going to go ahead and start on up. We can join this server. Now at this point, you're the only person that can join the server, but it's good to join the server at this point, in my opinion, just to test and make sure everything is working correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Minecraft 1.20.6. And once we've opened Minecraft 1.20.6, we will be able to join this server and test and make sure it's working for us before we go through port forwarding and all the stuff that's required for your friends to join. So Minecraft is now open and our server is online. If we go into multiplayer and then click proceed, we can add this server. So we're going to go ahead and click add server here. You can name this whatever you want. I'm going to name it local Minecraft server because what's well, the local basically connection. You're the only person that can join this on your local connection. And then for the server address, what we want to do is do local host as the IP. Local host, all one word, exactly like that, and click done. When we do that, the server will resolve, and there it is. We can now double click to join it, and it'll join right on in. Now, at this point, you can join your server, but I'm guessing you want to make a Minecraft server because you want to play Minecraft with your friends, right? That's the whole goal of making a Minecraft server. So let's go ahead and move on to that part of the process, which is going to involve port forwarding. I do want to mention you don't have to port forward on Simple Game Hosting. So if you were to make a server at Simple Game Hosting, no port forwarding is required or anything like that. Um, in my opinion, port forwarding is the most difficult part of the process. That's why I wanted to quickly mention that here. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and close out of Minecraft and stop our server. Every time you stop your server, you should come over here and type stop, right, like so, in this like a uh, little text box at the bottom and hit enter. That's going to properly save the the server when you stop it and, and shut it down. That way, you know, the world doesn't like accidentally have issues and things like that. Nevertheless, with that now done, we can close out of this folder because we need to port forward. To do that, we want to go ahead and open up the CMD. So we have the command prompt here. Just search CMD in the start menu. Open that up. And then in here, what we want to do is type IP CONFIG. IP config, all one word, exactly like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up Notepad because we want to make a note of some of these numbers that are in here. Specifically, two numbers. The first one being our IPv4 address. So our IPv4 address is, where is it? Right here. And in my case, that's going to be 192. 2.168.1.2. Yours may be completely different. It probably is, and that's why we're getting these numbers like this. Because if we didn't have to get these numbers like this, I'd just tell you the numbers. There's no reason to overcomplicate it if we don't have to. For our default gateway here, what we want to do is find right here the default gateway. Now, there's one that's numbers and letters that's very complex. Right under that, it's blank over here. There's another one. That's your default gateway as well. We're going to use the easy one here, 192.168.1.1. So we want to take that number, the one that's under this big long string, and copy that over here. Speaking of, we actually do want to copy it, so we're going to go ahead and highlight that and copy it. And then we want to open up our browser. And in a brand new tab in our browser, we want to go ahead and enter in this, our default gateway. Right up here at the top where you would normally type in simplegamehosting.com, the breakdown.xyz, youtube.com. You want to go ahead and enter in your default gateway and hit enter. When you do that, it's going to open up a login box like this. And in this login box, you want to use your router's username and password. Unfortunately, this is different than your Wi-Fi password. And we have a guide in the description down below on how to find your router's password. Start with method one all the way down through method five. Most people find it by method three or four and don't have to contact their ISP. I understand how big of a pain that can be. So we want to try to find it by method three or four here. Once you've found it, come back over to your router and log in. I'm going to do that and I will meet you once we've logged in to port forward. This is what it looks like when I log into my router, but yours is probably completely different and that's okay. I'm going to be giving you all the common terms that port forwarding could be and like the common locations it could be in your router, but we also, of course, have a guide in the description down below on how to port forward on any router. This guide is great, but really the main thing is actually this video. It goes over port forwarding on the top routers that are out there today and how to port forward on them successfully from Verizon and AT&T to Netgear and Linksys. They're all in that route or in that guide for all the most popular routers. Even if your specific router isn't mentioned, by the way, it's probably still worth watching because a lot of router software is very similar. So while you may not have your specific router, you'll pick up a lot of the terms and a lot of the potential locations when you are in your router. In my router, it's actually in advanced and then it is in advanced again and then port forwarding 
slash port triggering. For you, it could be in NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding, NAT gaming, NAT gaming. It could be in Appson gaming. It could be in security. It could be in networking. It could be in administration, an advanced, or an admin tab. It could also be called NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It could be called just simply port forwarding or single port forwarding. I've also seen it be located in a firewall tab, and I've also seen it be called NAT firewall, which does not make much sense to me, but there's tons of different places it could be. Overall, you're looking for port forwarding slash port triggering or a port forwarding option in your router. Don't be afraid to click around. You can't really break stuff in your router. Um, as long as you don't save anything that uh, isn't port forwarding, you're good to go, right? And if you do have issues or whatever, it's easy to reset a router, so don't worry about that either. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and once we found port forwarding, add a custom port forward, add a new port forward, click the plus button on your port forwarding, or if you just have a big list of empty boxes, we're going to start with the first box on that list. For the service name or ID in your port forward, this is just what the port forward is for. So this is for a Minecraft server. So we're going to go ahead and name it Minecraft server. That's just so we know what it's for. For protocol, we want to select TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or both. It could literally be the word both. And whatever it is, you want to make sure that both of those are selected. If for whatever reason you can't, do this twice, once for TCP and once for UDP, leaving everything else we're about to do the same. For anything involving the word port, so external port, internal port, first port, second port, inside port, outside port, it doesn't matter. If the word port, P-O-R-T, is there, you want to enter in 25565. So we have external port 25565. Internal port, hey, 25565, because Nick said anywhere that there's a word port, we want to enter that in, and so that's what we've done. For internal IP address, this is actually going to be that IPv4 address we found earlier, which in my case is 192.168.1.2. You may not have an option for an internal IP address, and instead have a list of all the devices on your network. If that's the case, just click on the one that you're starting your Minecraft server on, so, for example, if it's, you know, your PC is what the name of your computer is, you'll find that in the list of devices and click on it because that's where you're starting your server. Now, at this point, we're done. We can click apply, we can click save, but some people will need an outside or external IP address for their port forward. That's not most of you. Probably 10% of you need that. But actually, every single person watching this video needs their external outside IP address because that's the IP address that your friends are going to use to join the server. Luckily, in the description down below, we have this, which is what's my IP address. And you can just click to copy your IP address here. We're just taking your IP and giving it back to you on the website here. But you can see all the information someone can get from your public IP address, your city, your state, your region, your latitude and longitude coordinates from your IP address. That's why it's so important this server is only for people you trust and you keep it as secure as possible because a lot can be done with your IP address. Nevertheless, once you have your IP, we can go back over to our router and paste it in here and save the port forward if you needed it. Otherwise, you needed it anyway because we're going to use it in Minecraft. Let's go ahead and get our server running by opening it back up and double-clicking on that server.jar and get Minecraft open. And uh, that way we can join the server using the public IP, give things a test, all of that. So here we are. The server is started. Minecraft is open. Now to join the server this time, we're going to go to multiplayer. We're going to click proceed and then we're going to add another server. For this, we're going to name it our public IP because, well, this is going to be using our public IP. And then we can paste the public IP in here. You can still see .43 at the end, but you can't see anything else because you want to keep this private. Like, we don't want to give this to everyone who is watching this video here. Then we go ahead and click Done. And once we've done that, it will resolve. And there it is. Now, I know that I can double-click this and join via my public IP. It's going to let me in. No problem. The reason I know that is because my ISP, my Internet Service Provider, is okay with me connecting back to myself. But some Internet Service Providers aren't okay with that. It's a little weird. And because of that, you might not be able to join using your public IP. But that's okay. You don't have to. The only people that have to join using your public IP is your friends. You can join using that local host connection that we used earlier in the video. All your friends will join using the public IP. If you do that, no worries, no issues with that. And honestly, it's a good way to join the server no matter what. Your friends, though, will then join via the public IP and be good to go. Now, what if your friends can't join? What if you've done everything, your friends can't join? Well, first, double check the port forward. It's not uncommon to miss something there, and it's uh, pretty difficult to do, so it's very understandable to miss something. But if you haven't missed anything with your port forward, it's probably a firewall. It could be the firewall on an antivirus or on your router, but it's probably Windows Defender firewall. And in the description down below, we have this, which is how to allow Java through your Windows Defender firewall for Minecraft servers. It goes over everything you need to know to get 
basically Java set up and working for your Minecraft server and allowing your friends to then join the server. I also have a guide on adding more RAM to the server if it starts crashing or having issues or lag. Adding more RAM is a good way to check and make sure everything is good. So that's why this video exists and it's linked down below. And lastly, there's this, which is how to fix a broken Minecraft server. It is 20 minutes of me fixing various Minecraft server problems and it's worth watching if you want to be a server admin and now you are a server admin if you have a server and make sure you get as best of an experience as possible for you and everyone playing the server. Knowing common issues, which is what this is, is a great way to do that so it's worth a watch. Nevertheless, at this point, you now know how to make a Minecraft server for you and your friends. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comment section down below, and we'll see you in the next video. My name is Nick, and I'm out. Peace.